Hey, what's going on? Coach Joe here with Heartletics.com, and I actually want to share with you a special video. This is actually a behind the scenes of one of our live coaching calls that we did with our members, and it's all about the proper mindset when it comes to being successful or reaching your goals. And honestly, it doesn't matter if your goal is to lose body fat, to build muscle, or maybe just improve in your relationships, improve in your career, or maybe start your own business. Whatever your goals are, this episode is really going to help you out with having the proper mindset. So before we dive in, all I ask in return is that you give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below after you get done watching it, letting me know your biggest takeaway. And if you have not yet already subscribed, make sure to do that. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. With that being said, let's dive right in. This conversation is not just for you, Phil. This conversation is for everybody, right? This is all about the proper mindset when it comes to success at reaching your goals. And hands down, I put a lot of time, energy into this presentation. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, no, listen, I struggle with everything, right? Everybody does. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a train. It's a derailing train, right? I'm usually pretty good with nutrition. I can keep that straight for a while. Then the weekend comes, right? We all get to the weekend and all of a sudden it's like, I got a party here. I got this going on and I let the train run off the rails. With that comes Monday morning or the next day. And you're just like, well, I already screwed up the day before. So I'll just stay inconsistent. You know, and then at some point you get to the to a point where I got last week when I sent Coach Mark my check-in where I said, I'm just fed up with myself because I can't stay on track long enough to see the results that I should be earning. So like Monday much like probably everybody on this call and out there is a reset day for everybody. So you always target Monday and you're like, I'm going to get it right from Monday on. So listen, I, I struggle with a bit of everything, but I think once the nutrition falls off track, there goes everything else as well, because you don't see the usefulness of the workouts and the walking and everything else, even though that's all, you know, BS. We all know that's not the right way to look at it. But yeah, that's my issue, man. This is what we're going to be diving into today's topic, man. For starters, goal setting expectations, right? Because there has to be expectations. Just like how if somebody thinks like, you know, they're 30% body fat, they have the man boobs, the beer belly, right? The whole nine yards. And they sign up for a gym membership in the beginning of the year, right? For new year's resolution. And they work out for two whole days and eat salads. Like they're not going to, you know, get six pack abs overnight pretty much, right? They have to have realistic expectations. So I want to make sure that we dive into that as well. And then we're going to go into the story that we tell ourselves. And I think this has a lot to do with, once again, the proper mindset when it comes to having success at reaching our goals. Then we're going to get into shifting our belief system, some warning signs, and then lastly, some key tips just to stay on track. You've probably seen this plenty of times, uh, Phil, right? This is the philosophy of our athletics. And if you guys are you know, brand new to watching this or watching it maybe on YouTube or Spotify and listening in, you know, we go over three main pillars, right? Training, nutrition, and mindset. And we always like to say it like this is the training is the icing on the cake. It's just the sprinkles. You know, you can't out train a bad diet, right? And with that being said, we hate using the word diet. We like focusing on proper nutrition for our body type. Three key things that we use, right? A three-step framework with nutrition, the right calories for fat loss, the right macros for fat loss, mainly just focusing on your protein. And then obviously the 80-20 rule to allow you to fit in your favorite foods so that way you're not going cold turkey with it. But you can see here at the at the very bottom, Phil, the mindset. And and Phil, you know that since the get-go, since first getting signed up with coaching, you know I love talking about the mindset, you know? So that's what this is all going to be based around, right? This presentation. I think it's going to help you because if we're able to focus on the right mindset, that's going to help us with the right nutrition. That's going to help us with the right training. And if we can collectively, you know, focus on all these, we're going to have a much easier time staying on the right track. Everybody thinks that the road to success is just a straight line, right? This horizontal line and it's not you know once again you can't just um start eating salads and it's been two whole days and you know go for more walks and you know sign up for a gym membership and expect to see six pack abs overnight it doesn't work like that the reality is that it works like this you know that 2.0 version of yourself that you're trying to get to and that could be anything right maybe that's you know, you having six pack abs, maybe that's you getting off your medications, maybe that's you having more energy, more confidence, maybe it's an improvement in your relationship, maybe it's an improvement in your career or anything like that, starting your own business. It's a level up, right? So it's not this horizontal shift, it's actually a vertical shift. But the reality is that it's levels, right? You are literally progressing here like steps. So you're you're growing up, right? Just like how you're going to the gym, you're breaking down the muscle, it grows stronger. Well, hey, 
realistically, that's how it is when it comes to the reality of somebody reaching their goals. But you can see that there's plenty of times that, hey, you're going to have some downhill battles, right, where we're falling off track. But this is what I really want to make the meat of today's training video all about is this empty space, right? Because the reality is a lot of people know this. And Phil, you probably know this as well when it comes to reaching your goals that, hey, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be a, you know, uh, a walk in the park. There's going to be some adversity. But what matters the most is just like, hey, what happens when you, we have to take that leap forward? We have to have some faith. We have to take that jump. And I never really talked about this before on a live training video. So that's what I'm really excited about this presentation. So let's dive right into this part right here. And it all boils down to the story that we tell ourselves, the words that we tell ourselves, the right affirmations. I say it all the time, especially in the Bible, right? Um, that, you know, death and life are found in the power of the ton, you know, and it's just like one of these things about saying the right words to ourselves. And Phil, if you don't mind kind of tuning in and chatting, um, when you first got started on with our coaching program and we started working with your mindset and we eventually started working on the right affirmations, did it feel kind of weird and awkward to yourself at first? Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's not something yeah. I've done before. And, it, and, you know, from the outside looking in, you look at that stuff and you go, I don't need to do that. That's all, you know, weird, but it's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why I asked you that is because everybody feels that way at first. But the reality is that like, our conversations, right? Whether it's verbally or whether it's our thinking patterns, this is what's going to shift and change our reality. And if we really want to focus on a new belief system, if we really want to focus on making that identity shift, let's just say that I am this individual right now. And this is going to be a fun little uh, cue lesson for you, uh, Phil, to, to guess what's going to happen next, right? So let's say I'm this guy and let's just say my whole entire life, I've never had success in a relationship. It seems like every time I went on a date with a girl, like it would end up bad or they would ghost me. And it's just like, seems like for years, I've been trying to find the right one for me, but nothing ever seems to happen, right? So I eventually, you know, connect with this girl on a dating app. So I don't even have her number. I'm just messaging her on a dating app. And we agreed to meet at this restaurant, right? At let's say 7 p.m. on Saturday night. And I go there and it's, you know, I'm, I'm there a few minutes early, you know, I'm just kind of like playing it and how it is. And just maybe she showed up early. So I'm just being respectful. Sure enough, I'm looking down at seven o'clock. She's not there. I'm like, all right, maybe she's running late. Eventually it's 715. You know, I message her on the app and, you know, hey, she doesn't reply back. I stay till 730. Eventually I, you know, stay a little bit longer. It's 745. It's eight o'clock. Nowhere to be found. Right. I'm not seen anything right like the only thing that i'm really seeing is just like the clock just ticking away right now my question to you phil is just like if you know that about my past right that i've always struggled in relationships and here i am you know um trying to connect with this girl on a date and she ends up pretty much ghosting me right like not replying back to any of my messages how do you think i would be feeling right there at that restaurant knowing that it's an hour past the time when she was supposed to be there and she's still not there I mean, you're you're probably telling yourself you did something wrong, and that you're you know you're not you're not making the right steps, or you sent the wrong message, or you know who knows you you're making up a story in your head. Meanwhile, you don't know what actually happened on the other side, right? You're exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. The reality is like that's a hundred percent true, right? I'm telling myself I'm a lost cause. I'm telling myself like, oh man, why does this always happen to me? And I'm telling myself like, oh, maybe I'm just like not destined to find the right person, you know? So now let's flip the switch, right? Because that's only your perspective. And once again, guys, this is all about the mindset. And I don't mean just speaking the right words. I mean, thinking the right things, right? It's telling yourself the right story. So let's play it again, right? Let's just say that that event happens. And let's just say that, you know what? She doesn't show up at the restaurant. And, you know, it's it's eight o'clock and I end up leaving. But maybe the story is a little bit different this go around, because maybe what happened was she was on her way to the restaurant to meet me at seven o'clock and she happened to get a flat tire. Her phone falls down the sewer drain. Right. So she's looking over at that tire and her, her phone falls out of her purse into that sewer drain. So now there's no way to contact me. You know, she's waiting there right for a flat tire. She's waiting for you know, like a, a tow truck to come and it's like another hour goes by and all this stuff. 
eventually, right, she gets her car fixed, she gets back home safe and sound. And maybe like the next day or two, she eventually gets, you know, her phone back working, you know, she has to go buy a new one. And all of a sudden, she sees all these messages from me on that app. And maybe this individual is just thinking like, man, I'm just like, so embarrassed at this point. You know, it's just like, I, I don't even want to message them back. Like, I just feel like the bad guy, right? Well, what if the reality was that let's just say that me and this girl, we'll just call her, you know, Allison, she's at the grocery store and I'm at the grocery store. I happen to see her. I'm like, Allison, right? Like what, what happened that night? Like a few weeks ago, like I thought we were supposed to like meet up at the restaurant. Like, is everything okay? She's like, Joe, you wouldn't believe this. My whole entire life, I struggled with relationships. It seems like every time I was going to go on a date with somebody or find the right person for me, it seems like something bad would always happen. And you wouldn't believe this, but on the way to the restaurant to meet you, I actually got a flat tire. And when I was like, you know, bending over to take a look at the tire, you know, my, my phone was in my purse and my phone actually fell through the, the sewer drain and I couldn't contact you at all. I felt so bad by the time that I, you know, could get a new phone and contact you. I just felt like, what's the point? Like, this just seems to always happen to me. And sure enough, me and Allison, were at the grocery store. We're laughing it off because I'm telling her like, Hey, that, that seems like that always happens to me too, you know? And so it just goes to show you that like, you never know that dream outcome because let's say we laugh it off and eventually get married and have kids and boom, best thing for us. So it's all about the story that we tell ourselves. Are we going to look at the glass being half full? Or are we going to look at the glass being half empty? You know, despite like, hey, the situation's very real, right? Like I'm at the restaurant by myself, but instead of me, you know, boohoo, cry me a river, right? I could change the perspective. Like maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Maybe this is all going to work out in my favor and I don't know how, but maybe it just might. And you're going to learn a little bit more about that as we progress. Phil, I want to get your feedback though. Is this making sense a little bit about the perspective shift? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, who doesn't tell themselves a story in their head and then lives out the story the rest of the way, even though it could be an entirely <laughs> different, you know, plot and, and result. So. Exactly. Exactly. Because the story is what matters the most, right? And it's all about what are you telling yourself? You know, we're having this conversation because a lot of you guys want to focus on your health and fitness goals. And for some of you guys, you may think it's hard, right? You may think like, oh, I, I have to be strict with my nutrition. I have to be on my point with drinking my water. I have to be doing my workouts. I have to, I have to, I have to. Rather than changing the mindset of, hey, it's actually easy. I just have to do this. Right. And so that's the point of this whole entire conversation as we progress is start thinking about it as a different shift mentally, that it's easy, that it's possible, that even though life throws you some, you know, unfortunate event, events, and that could be anything. And we'll talk about that as we progress, but you have to still be optimistic. You still have to have that faith despite those challenges ahead. Because once again, as we're going up here to our 2.0 version of ourselves, once again, growing into this 2.0 version of ourselves, new levels, it's going to have new devils, right? It's going to have a bunch of different adversity. And there's going to be times where we have to take that leap forward. And despite the challenges that's ahead, it's the story that we tell ourselves that's either going to make us get over the hump and help us progress to our goals or just help us kind of derail where it seems like, you know, hey, this is the regular sauna dance, right? Lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, on track, off track, on track, off track. So it's all about shifting our belief system. And I don't want you to think this is hard to do by any means, uh, but I do want you as well as everybody else that's tuning in listening to this to be open-minded when it comes to having a new belief system. Because the reality is, right, there are many different beliefs. Everybody has their own beliefs. Everybody has their own truths and everything like this. And uh, I, I actually heard this one time on a podcast and I actually liked it that, hey, there's one planet Earth, but there's many worlds that we're all living in, right? And it's all about the perspective that somebody's seeing it in. And so this is why I want to give you guys permission that, hey, at the end of the day, shift your belief system when it comes to your health and fitness goals, when it comes to your career goals, when it comes to your relationship goals, switch your belief system, okay? And that's going to start with, you know, having the right thoughts. That's going to also start with the right words that we're affirming to ourselves to eventually make it come true as our new belief, you know? So 
I'll give you a little quick story here. You know, way back in the day, a lot of you guys know this. I struggled with having this binge eating disorder, right? Good foods versus bad foods. And it wasn't until I got certified in nutrition where guess what? I had a new belief system because they were able to teach me that, hey, there is no good foods. There is no bad foods. It's literally calories, macros, and micros. That's it right? Keep it simple, stupid. So it's just like, hey, you're overeating or you're undereating, right? Plain and simple. Don't put a label on food as if it's good or if it's bad. When I learned that, I was like, man, this is amazing, right? And it shifted my belief system to understanding about proper nutrition, right? There's a bunch of people in different events, right? That could also help shift different beliefs like Roger Bannister, who was the first person ever to complete a four minute mile. Before he was able to do it, everybody thought it was impossible, the doctors even thought that the human heart would explode if somebody was able to complete it. But guess what? He was able to do it. And since he was able to do it, he was able to break those self limiting beliefs in others. So that way now there's been hundreds of other people that have been able to complete that four minute mile. So it's just like, keep that in mind that at the end of the day, you know, you might have these deep rooted beliefs because maybe you haven't had success at reaching your goals in the past. But remember, right? The windshield is always a lot bigger than the rear view mirror. It's where we're going, not what have we been doing before in the past. So just keep that in mind because we want to shift our belief system. When we shift our beliefs, that's going to help us obviously change into new habits. That's going to help us change into our a different identity. And when you can focus on this right here, I promise you guys this, it doesn't matter if your goal is to lose body fat, if your goal is to put on more muscle, if your goal is to get off your medications, to you know, make more money in your career to start your own business, to have a better relationship. This right here is the blueprint, right? But this has everything to do with, once again, what are the words we're saying? What are our internal conversations that we're having with ourselves? What are our thoughts? You know, this is a lot to do with your subconscious mind. This is a lot to do with, once again, like, what are you doing daily that's in alignment with your goals? And we're going to talk about that. And then your identity. How do you see yourself? right? And how do others see you? But that all boils down to, once again, how do you see yourself first? Phil, before we continue, man, let me get some feedback. How is this making sense a little bit? Do you have any questions? I have no questions. No, th this makes perfect sense. It is what it is, right? If I can believe that I'm I'm the person, the 2.0 version I want to be, then I can get there. The, the problem is, is the stumbling blocks in between of the story and the way that gets in the way of the belief and you know you have to understand how to push that aside so to speak so totally yeah. yeah man so let's talk about some warning signs right because what you just said was the stumbling blocks right and these are the warning signs if phil you're over in new jersey and you're going to come up to you know cleveland ohio and get a leg workout in with me and smash some donuts afterwards right there's going to be a lot of different signs that you're going to see on the side of the road so it's like understanding that there's also going to be these warning signs when it comes to reaching our health and fitness goals, when it comes to reaching any kind of goals, right? But there's three key signs I want you to understand when life is throwing you adversity. Three key signs, and I got them laid out for you right here, okay? The first one, and I wanna say this before we continue, right? Pay attention. Guys, I kid you not, there's anything to take away from this video right now that you're watching. Pay attention to this. This is where most people fail at. And Phil, you literally just said it. You said, hey, I understand this, but it's what do I do when I'm throwing adversity? What do I do when I'm throwing the challenges? If you guys want to write this out and put it somewhere as a, a reminder daily, I promise you it's only going to help you, okay? Doubt, how, faith. We have right here five letters, three letters, five letters, okay? Let me explain this, especially when it comes to reaching your goals. Let's talk about doubt first. So doubt I like to say that's like the devil, right? What is the devil? Maybe that's the bad wolf. Maybe that's the lies that we tell ourselves, right? Whatever it is, it is a form, a, um, a, a question in our head of, hey, is this possible? And the minute we start doubting ourselves, the minute we start losing belief in our system, right? Our belief in ourselves. And we lose our beliefs. Guess what, guys? Like, if Roger Bannister, you know, he didn't believe in himself, even though there were so many people that told him, even the doctors, that it was impossible, he would never be able to accomplish it. But regardless of what everybody else said, he still believed in himself. So I want you to keep that in mind. Anytime there's doubt, 
think of yourself, is this a from a powerful state or a primal state? Is this coming from the devil or is this coming from like, you know, the good wolf? Is it coming from, you know, the good angel on my shoulder or the bad angel? You're assuming me, the, the devil on my shoulder, right? It's just like one of these things that you need to just figure out. And this is for you, plain and simple, right? Whatever resonates with you to help you have reassurance, knowing that if there's any kind of lies that's going on, that, hey, we're not good enough. Oh, this always happens to us. Oh, see, we start this and eventually fall off track because life gets in the way. Whatever it is that makes you doubt reaching your goals, you have to just embrace it and have full awareness to just say, hey, where is this coming from? Is this coming from the best version of myself that wants me to be to be to successful, right? Or is it coming from maybe that bad wolf that's constantly pulling me back from reaching my goals? Now let's talk about how, right? I like to say the how is the ego right? And everybody has it, right? I'm sure there's plenty of people that, you know, quote unquote, think they know what they're supposed to be doing. And I hear it all the time with guys that apply for our coaching program. Oh, Joe, I know what I'm, you know, should be doing. I know I should be eating clean, right? Or, oh, I know my problem is portion control, or I know I have to do this, right? But the reality is like, maybe the how, right? And the thinking is just the ego. It's you literally getting in your own way. It's you thinking that, hey, you're in full control over this when you're not, right? And it's just like learning how to just let go, let God type deal, where when the how comes in, you know, there's so many different ways to skin a cat. And Phil, I'm sure you heard that plenty of times. You know, somebody could get in shape with going to the gym. Somebody can get in shape with not going to the gym. Somebody could, you know, get in shape with hitting their protein goals and focusing on their macros. Other people can get in shape with, you know, focusing on just a lower calorie range, right? So they're still eating that calorie deficit. There's plenty of ways. But oftentimes is that we kind of like keep it as this one track horse where it's, oh, a straight line from point A to point B. And if things, right, get in our way and it takes us off that track, our ego gets in the way. Because now we start questioning how. How is this possible? Like, uh, you know, the ego kind of gets in the way. And once again, that ego is going to start creeping into that doubt from the devil. So it's understanding this when it's like, hey, sometimes like you can still reach your goals. And guess what? Like you hurt your back or you hurt your knee and maybe you can't go to the gym anymore, but maybe you can focus on getting more steps in and focus on the right mindset and focus on the right nutrition, right? Once again, there's plenty of different roads here that lead to Rome. It's all about understanding though that, hey, when life is throwing you curveballs, what is going to be that mindset that's going to help you at least put one foot forward into the right direction rather than just say, how is this even possible? And then next thing you know, we're feeding into the devil. We're feeding into that bad wolf. We're feeding into that self-doubt. And we're, you know, going back to our old ways because we're throwing the towel in. We're quitting way too soon. So this is where I really want you guys to focus on faith. Faith is trust. Right? And I've told you guys plenty of times, right? Trust the process. And in fact, right, like this is the best metaphor that I can use is 99% of the people that get signed up for Heartletics, they struggle in the very beginning weeks because they have a hard time hitting their protein goal. They have a hard time eating as many calories as we ask them to do for proper fat loss. And they think in their mind like, oh man, Joe is crazy. He's full of it. Here I am gaining weight the first few weeks. How is this even possible? But then guess what? You have faith. You have trust in the process. Eventually, right? After a few short weeks of consistency, your metabolic rate speeds up and you eventually start losing more body fat. And it's like, you're eating way more food than ever before. Phil, you remember that? I do. And uh, I remember saying, I can't eat any more protein because I'm just stuffed. And that was in the very beginning. Now I'm, I'm begging for more food. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like one of these things that it's just like, it, it, you just have to have faith. You just have to trust the process. You have to have this, I like to say, unshakable confidence, knowing that it's all going to work out in the end. Right. And a great affirmation is like, hey, everything is always working out in my favor. Despite any kind of challenges, despite any kind of curveballs, it's knowing that in the end, it's all going to work out. Because here's the truth, right? Henry Ford said it best, right? One of my favorite quotes, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Your thoughts, that's what's going to change and create your new reality. And half the time, this is like a friendly reminder that we have to go through growing pains, right? And like treat it like that caterpillar going into a cocoon, coming out a butterfly. 
Treat it like going to the gym to break down the muscle before it grows back stronger. Treat it like a civilian signing up for the military, going through boot camp to be broken down so that he can raise right back up as a soldier this go around. So anything that you need to remind yourself when life is throwing you these tests, when life is throwing these curveballs, these adversities, it's not here to break you. It's not here to kill you. It's not here to, you know, make you quit and throw back in the, you know, towel and go back to your old ways. It's only here to help you grow. Because remember, if we're trying to get that 2.0 version of ourselves, we need to grow into it. It's not going to be that horizontal shift. It's going to be that vertical shift where we're constantly growing. So now let's dive into this, right? Key tips to staying on track, okay? And as you can see here, nutrition, excuse me, training, nutrition, mindset okay focus on the mindset first before anything else focus on the mindset first and so much so phil it's just that internal conversation that we're having with ourselves you know it's that new belief system of hey you know everything is working out in our favor hey it's easy and effortlessly for me to reach my goals i'm going to get there i have faith i'm trusting the process it's all going to work out in the end because if you can have that mindset that's going to help you stay on track with the nutrition. That's going to help you stay on track with the training. If you don't have that mindset, if you have the mindset of, oh, it's hard to get in shape. Oh, I have to be, you know, very strict and, you know, religiously hitting my macros and staying on top of it. And I can't have any cakes or alcohol or anything like that. And it's this picture that you're painting as this new belief system of it being hard. Guess what? That's going to be the reality. And it's going to be very hard for you to hit your nutrition goals, very hard for you to hit your training goals. Hence, why most people, once again, they fall off track. They fall off the wagon. It has nothing to really to do with the training and nutrition. It has everything to do with their belief system. You know, there's plenty of times in most recent weeks, honestly, for me, where I completely fell off track, right? Like I literally was at a, a, a funeral and I probably ate 5,000 calories worth of like literally lemon meringue pie and apple pie. And I felt disgusted with myself afterwards. But you know what? Who cares? Life's too short to worry about all that. Life's too short to feel guilty and regretful. I know what to do to just, hey, stay right back on track. It's a little bump in the road, but it's nothing that's gonna total my car and make me go back to you know my old ways. So it's just like having the right mindset that's what's going to help you stay on the right track. So when we can boil into this first, this becomes pretty easy. Can we agree on that, Phil? Uh, totally. Anytime I've been on track and going steady, it's because my mind is telling me that I'm in the right spot and it's not telling me stories to derail me. So, Yeah, yeah. And like, I mean, let's let's talk about this real quick, the nutrition and the training just for somebody else that maybe if they're not part of Heartletics, you know, this is all fresh to them. This is all woo woo with the mindset stuff and they just want to get to the juice right? So let's give them the juice, right? Let's give them the secret sauce, right? Nutrition. Hey, can we focus on like maybe just hitting our protein goal, right? We want to keep it so simple. I'm not saying hit, you know, every single macronutrient. I'm not saying focus on, you know, let's say even like hitting your calorie goal. Can we focus on just hitting that protein goal? Can we be consistent with that? And, you know, for most of you guys that's on here, you have some strategies, right? That me and the other coaches have helped you out with whether it's the two by two by two method, whether it's doing the protein sparing fast, anything like that, where it's pretty easy by now, at least, right? Hitting your protein goal. So can we do one simple thing and just say hit our protein goal? We probably can check, right? And then let's say training, right? We can break this down into several different aspects, whether that is actual working out or whether that's, you know, getting some steps in or whether that's doing maybe some push-ups or sit-ups, I like to say it like this, when you are, you know, thrown adversity, when you're throwing storms and curveballs and you feel like, oh man, like I, 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 this is way too hard. Maybe it's my schedule or whatever the case may be. Do whatever is the easiest thing for you to do. That's it. So for you, Phil, it might be just getting your steps in. It might be just doing some pushups in between your meetings. It might be some bodyweight squats. It might be, hey, I'm going to commit right to two days out of the week working out. Because I know so many people that they start off strong, right? They're crushing the gym, they're crushing their workouts, they're hitting their steps, they're hitting their you know hydration goals, the macros, everything like that. Everything's great. And then they get thrown the adversity. They get thrown the challenges. They get thrown the growing pains that are there to test them. And then they fall off track. And then they try to get right back to where they were, going right back to working out five days a week or six days a week. And eventually, right, like it's too hard. 
because they already made that leap into falling off where they're trying to get right back to where they were. And this is why you have to learn how to build up momentum. So instead of going back to, you know, hey, working out, you know, and hitting our macros and doing everything perfectly, like how we were when life is great, we need to have grace for ourselves. We need to understand that, hey, when we fall off track, it's okay, right? We're not trying to go back to being perfect. It's all about progression over perfection. And it's all about what is the small things that I can do today that's better than where I was yesterday when I wasn't doing anything at all, you know? So it's like, hey, maybe that's just, you know, drinking more water. Maybe that's hitting our protein. Maybe that's just getting some steps. Whatever it is that's simple, right? And then the next day, let's focus on doing maybe a little bit more. And then the next day, and then the next day, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. The problem is like we all lack patience because we live in the Amazon Prime type of day and age, right? We want everything tomorrow. So we realistically try to get right back to where we were. And it's, you know, too big of a bite, too big of a chew. We end up swallowing that pride and falling off again. So what we need to do is learn how to just like take it day by day and just have fun and just realize like, okay, hey, what is the small thing that I can do today that's better than where I was at yesterday? But what's going to help somebody out with all that is once again, the mindset, because I already talked about those warning signs, right? And one of them was the ego. One of them was that doubt. And that might be someone's like limiting belief where they fall off track. They're trying to get back to, you know, working out five days a week or whatever the case may be, or very being very consistent where it's the lies in their head start, you know, telling themselves, see, this is hard. See, you can't do this. You know, this is impossible, but it's once again, what is the words that we're telling ourselves? Let's go into some mindset techniques. And these are just a few of them. Phil, you're probably familiar with majority of all of these, you know, and I didn't want to list everything under the sun, but I wanted to just give a few on here. You know, and I, I do want to say this, guys, when it comes down to the mindset techniques, it's very similar to the workouts. It's very similar to the nutrition. It's very similar to anything that we talk about here at Heartletics. So, Phil, before we dive into this, man, let's do a little pop quiz, right? So um, could somebody hit their protein goal by only consuming, let's say, uh, protein bars and protein powders? I mean, they could mathematically. Sure. Okay. Check, right? You got that right. Could yeah. somebody also hit their protein goal by eating all whole foods? Sure. Perfect, right? Two for two, right? You're crushing this. Yeah, man. Let's talk about let's talk about workouts, right? Could somebody, let's say, you know, go to the gym and let's say work out their biceps by doing just regular dumbbell bicep curls? That's sure. That'll work. Just okay. Could somebody go to the gym and work out their biceps by maybe doing, let's say, alternating hammer curls? Uh, I think so. I'm not very good with the anatomy, but I'm going to go with yes. <laughs> you, you, you got that one right, right? Um, could also, let's say somebody, um, I don't know, work out at home and maybe all they have access to is, let's say, a broomstick and they decide to do a makeshift barbell curl with some, you know, uh, milk, you know, gallons on the attached to the end. And they're doing, you know, bicep curls like this. So I've they're seen, at home. They're not I've even at the gym. Weirder. I've seen what? weirder. It'll work. It'll work. <laughs> but, but it'll work. Right. Yeah. Cool. So, so the reason why I asked you that Phil is so that way everybody can see, I gave two different analogies, nutrition first and training second. Hey, when it comes down to nutrition, plenty of ways to skin a cat, right? You got to find what works for you because at the end of the day, somebody could hit their protein goal with all supplements, protein powders, protein bars. Somebody could also hit that same macronutrient goal by doing all through whole foods. Somebody could also work out their muscle at the gym. Somebody could work out their muscle at the gym using a different exercise than our first candidate. And somebody can still work out their muscle at home without even going to the gym and just using some household tools. And the reason why I'm sharing all that is because once again, guys, this is all about the mindset. So these mindset techniques that I have, you don't need to be married to any of this, right? You just need to find out what is the one or two or three that is just going to help you be in alignment with your goals. That's going to help you feel better because when you're more positive, when you're more energetic, when you're more ambitious, guess what? It's going to help you build momentum. It's going to help you put, you know, a foot, one foot in front of the other. It's going to help you start taking action in your goals. Because if we're always, you know, let's say Debbie Downer, we don't care about making a change, right? We don't want to work on our mindset. Guess what, right? If we're looking at the glass half empty rather than half full, it's very easy for us to get stuck in a rut. 
right? If we're looking at the glass that way, it's very easy for us to constantly listen to the bad wolf and feed into those lies and not make a change with ourselves. And unfortunately, this is why I think a lot of people struggle when it comes to reaching their goals is because they don't do that internal shift. They don't do the internal work of working on their mindset. And that's once again, most important before we even get to the nutrition, before we even get to the training. So a few things that's on here, guys, is prayer. You know, if you believe in, you know, God or a higher source or, you know, whatever floats your boat, hey, it's all about having faith. It's all about venting and getting stuff off your chest. It's all about believing that, hey, at the end of the day, it's possible for you to reach your goals, right? Gratitude. The reason why gratitude is on here is because this also helps you with the mindset shift of, hey, I want, I want, I want. How do we change that to already have, Right. I want these goals. I want this better health. I want the six pack abs. I want this new job. I want to make more money. But what about the abundance of life that we're already living in currently right now? You know, so instead of us being that, you know, how I was back in the day, chasing my very first girlfriend and saying, oh, I want you. I want you. Can I have your number? Can I have your number? Can I have your number? Coming off needy. She wants nothing to do with me. When I stopped doing that, she came to me. She asked me for my number. Right. It's funny how that works. And it all has to do with, once again, like, are you going after your goals as chasing them because they're up on a pedestal and we're obsessed with them? Or do we have confidence knowing that like, hey, at the end of the day, we're going to reach our goals. Let's actually just take time to actually appreciate the things and the people in our life that we have going on for us right now. Meditation. I love meditation because it brings everything back into the present moment. A lot of us worry about the how, a lot of us worry about the doubt, a lot of us worry about the future, the past, the worry, the fear, the anxiety, everything like that. Meditation breaks it down very simple. Hey, what can we do to focus right now in the present moment? What can we do to collect our thoughts, collect our breath, right? And just get a lot more clear when it comes to taking the next step. Instead of worrying about all the smoke and mirrors that's in front of us, what can we do to once again, just calm down? There's so many different health benefits, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, to just practicing meditation. Affirmations, which you guys know I'm a huge fan of. And once again, sometimes when life is throwing us these curveballs, we have to look at it from the lens of a different perspective, right? We have to look at it from the thousand, you know, bird's eye perspective over here rather than just in the trenches. And I get it. That's a lot easier said than done. Because if let's say there's adversity at home or, you know, challenges or anything like that, you're in the middle of it. You're going through it, right? It's a growing pain, but it's once again, like having a mental reminder to yourself, what can we affirm to just give us some peace, give us some confidence, not knowing how, but eventually everything is all going to work out at the end of the day, you know? And so once again, affirmations really help us out with more of a self-talk right? And when we're speaking different things, we're also thinking different things. And I already mentioned this before, right? Henry Ford said it best, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. So affirmations is going to help us to once again, get in alignment with the proper mindset for us reaching our goals. Visualization. Why is this important? Well, at the end of the day, we got to make sure there's clarity on the goals that we want, right? Somebody could, you know, lose 20 pounds, but they lose 20 pounds of just cutting out their carbohydrates and it's nothing but water weight and they didn't change anything with their body comprehension or maybe they're still, you know, struggling with high, you know, blood pressure, high cholesterol and they're not, you know, better with their health because they didn't focus on the fat loss. Well, hey, I don't think that's very successful. So at the end of the day, visualizing your goals, how do you look? How do you feel, right? Like, how can we get there? You know, your RAS, your reticular activating system doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imaginary. So it's like, if we can spend, right, maybe just a five, 10 minutes a day, that's it. It doesn't be a long investment at all into just getting our, I like to say our GPS, where are we trying to get to? Where is the end destination? How do we map that out as much as possible? You know, before there was the iPhones and the Androids, you know, before there was, you know, even laptops or anything like that, somebody first thought about it in their head. So it's just like, why don't you think about where it is that you're trying to get to in your head first also? You know, it's just like sometimes, once again, we need this reminder that, you know, as technology is improving, somebody thought about that first. So it's like, why don't we focus on making that, you know, advancement, improvement in our own lives by focusing on the right, you know, mindset of where it is that we're trying to get to. And then lastly, self-reflection. I'm a huge fan of this one, right? Because it is shifting, right? your own internal confidence, your own internal belief system. It's so easy for us to say, oh man, 
like I missed my workout today or I didn't hit my goals today, right? And have pity on ourselves and negative self-talk that doesn't help us at all, right? So what does self-reflection do? It changes everything from the, oh man, like I'm missing out on this and I'm not good enough to look at everything that I'm doing right now, right? Maybe I didn't go to the gym, but hey, I spent quality time with my family. You know, maybe I prepared my meals for the day. Maybe I, you know, uh, taught my son how to ride a bike. And it's just like everything doesn't have to be obsessed with the goals. And every single day we're focusing on these goals. It's like, hey, let's have fun during this process. And self-reflection really helps you to just see that, man, we're actually progressing. We might not see it because we didn't take that huge leap forward and we didn't lose five pounds this week. But think about all the things we are accomplishing. Maybe it's new PRs in our workouts. Maybe it's, you know, more energy. Maybe our clothes are fitting better, like these small things. Or maybe it's things that it's just like we're building upon, like, you know, making the bed first thing in the morning or drinking plenty of water or, you know, texting maybe five or 10 people, you know, just giving them a, you know, a nice little message just to sharpen up and, you know, inspire them for that day. Just say, hey, I'm thinking about you. It's been a minute, you know, hope everything's going well. You know, like these things, once again, could really help change our mindset right? And all of this is once again, doing one thing, one thing. And it's just helping us look at the glass half full rather than half empty. It's helping us be a little bit more optimistic, helping us be a little bit more positive, right? Even though we're on this progression to our goals. But once again, it's helping us not obsessed over our goals. It's helping us not put our goals on a pedestal. Phil, is this making sense? Yeah, man. All driving together. Cool. So let's hit home, man. Final part, and then we'll do a takeaway. So the best way to shift your identity, right? And most of you guys know this. I say it time and time again. Surround yourself with the right people. I tell everybody this, everybody this right from the get-go. The members that engage the most inside the community, they get the best results, right? And it has everything to do with you changing your identity. You surrounding yourself with the right people that are like-minded, that are goal-oriented, that are trying to do their best when it comes to focus on that self-improvement, and you are as well. So let's just say I take my son, Oakley, right? So so Phil, my son is five years old right now. He's never been to uh, Italy, okay? And let's just say I, I sent him over there, right? Like UPS Direct, he gets over there the next few days, and like that dude starts living over there for like the next, I don't know, two, three years, right? So he comes over here, let's say two years later, right? Seven years old. Do you think he's going to know how to speak Italian? I, I would hope so. Yeah. Yeah. If he's, if he's only, let's say he's speaking or he's only with like staying right with a, a foster parent or something like that, like only an Italian speaking household, they don't even know how to speak English. They yeah. only know how to speak Italian. Do you think when he comes back, he's going to know how to speak Italian? Absolutely. He's going to acclimate to his environment. Yes. A hundred percent. You know, and Les Brown said it best, birds of a feather flock together. Jim Rome said, you become the sum of the five people that you surround yourself with the most. In the Bible, Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. So it's once again, like knowing this, right? That it's all taught in all these different principles and practices. And we see it all the way around, right? When we surround ourselves with those people that we're trying to become, we will become like them a lot faster because it's going to shift our internal identity. It's everything to do with that. Also, it boils down to support. It boils down to a community, right? It boils down to accountability. It boils down to, hey, when you are doubting yourself, when you are feeling fearful, when you have fell off the wagon, I mean, how many times do we see it in our own you know, community group where guys are going there and make a post, say, oh man, I had a bad weekend or guys, I fell off track, right? Nobody goes in there and replies back and says, ha, loser, right? Sucks for you. No. Everybody says the exact opposite. Hey, welcome back. Hey, it happens to me all the time. Hey, so glad to see you, right? Where are we going from here? Hey, what can we do to make those small little improvements? And you know what that does? That fills up your cup, right? That fills up your cup because you're deciding to make this investment into reaching out for support to fill up your cup to eventually pour more back into the others. So it all boils down to, once again, like understanding all this, guys, when it comes to your mindset this right here, this little presentation, it breaks everything down. And it doesn't matter, once again, if your goal is to lose fat, to build muscle, get off your medications, you know, have more success in your career, make more money, have a better relationship, you know, start your own business. It doesn't matter what your goals are. 
These are the blueprints. These are the fundamentals, right? But it all boils down to, once again, the right mindset. So let's do a little summary. So <clears throat> five things, guys. If I had to summarize this entire presentation, number one is to create a goal, right? Have clarity on that goal. Don't say, oh, I just want to lose weight, but try to be as crystal clear as possible, right? It's just like, hey, I want to lose X amount of weight. I want to have, you know, uh, this percentage of my body fat. I want to have, you know, uh, be able to bench press 300 pounds, whatever it is that you want to, you know, achieve, whatever it is that your goal have, you know, crystal clear on it. You know, you don't want to be the guy that is just like taking a bow and arrow and you're just shooting off into la la land. Like, no, have a target that you're trying to hit the bullseye on. Now, with that being said, number two is have the right expectations. It's not going to happen overnight. Nobody got fat in a week. Nobody's going to get six-pack abs in a week either, right? We have to have the right expectations. And we also have to understand, as I mentioned before, that it's not this horizontal plane from a 1.0 version of yourself to the 2.0 version of yourself. It's a level up, right? It's that vertical shift. And you have to go through growing pains. You have to go through adversity. You have to break down the muscle before it becomes stronger. You have to be that caterpillar that goes into the cocoon to come out a beautiful butterfly. So when we're going through adversity, when we're going through those challenges in life, we also got to make sure that we have the right mindset, right? Because, hey, these are the right expectations. In order for us to reach our goals, I got to make sure that I'm focusing on my mindset also and staying on track with everything because that's going to help us into point number three, changing your belief system, right? Somebody could be throwing a curveball and say, oh man, this is, you know, my life completely, just like how I, you know, did the analogy with me going on a date and never finding love in my life. But once again, right, what if we change our belief system to everything is always working out in our favor? You know, hey, every day and in every way, I'm getting better and better and better. You know, I know how to, you know, reach my goals. I'm always on track with my goals. I'm always consistently reaching my goals. Reaching my goals is easy for me, despite life throwing me curveballs. You know, whatever it is that you need to affirm, whatever it is that you need to tell yourself or surround yourself with the right group of people, that's going to help you shift your belief system. Because when you focus on shifting your mindset, when you focus on shifting, you know, into that right belief system, that identity, that's going to eventually become that reality. You know, it all boils down to your thoughts. It all boils down to the words that you are affirming and saying to yourself. Going into number four, <clears throat> work on that goal daily. And this is very key that I want to make sure that everybody understands. I said work on that goal daily. I did not say, hey, you need to be perfect overnight. I did not say, hey, you need to be obsessed with that goal. I did not say, hey, you need to focus on doing everything right nine out of 10, or excuse me, 10 out of 10 times. I'm saying work on that goal daily. Sometimes you might be 5% better than where you were yesterday. Sometimes you might be 10%. Sometimes you might be 50% better than who you were yesterday. Sometimes you might be just 1% better than who you were yesterday. But regardless, what can we do to take one step forward towards our goal? So that way we're not uh, degressing. That way we're not you know, feeding into the bad wolf. We're feeding into the doubt, the lies, the negativity that's taking us off track. And lastly, have fun with it. You know, life's too short to be constantly in this, you know, obsession over your goals, whether it's your health goals, career goals, anything like that. Life's way too short for that. Most of you guys that's watching this and listening in, hey, you have a family, right? It's like, don't forget about your family. Hey, you also have hobbies. Don't forget about your hobbies. You don't need to be 100% obsessed with trying to achieve your goals because that's the wrong mindset. Have fun with it, right? Like treat it where it's just like, hey, you know, I, I'm willing to roll the punches when life is throwing me curveballs and I'm going to have fun. Sometimes I might get hit. Sometimes I might be backed up in the corner with my hands up against my, you know, my face defending myself and I'm up against the ropes. But other times, man, I'm just having fun with this because I'm trusting the process. I'm having faith. It's all going to work out in the end. And despite the challenges I'm going through, I'm growing through them. I'm learning through them and it's making me better. Maybe that's physically. Maybe that's mentally. Maybe that's emotionally. Maybe that's spiritually. But regardless, I want to have fun in all this. I don't want to treat it like it's, oh man, like this is hard to do. Because once again, that's going to be the reality that you're literally painting for yourself. If you think that it's hard and it's going to be hard, it's going to be hard. But instead, if you're having fun with it and you think it's going to be easy and you can treat it effortlessly when it comes to reaching your goals and staying on track, hey, that's the reality that you're also painting as well.